This is the Creality K1C. And this is the Creality K1 SE. So let's take a look at this one and why you'd buy this machine over this machine. And yes, another K1, I know. So I turned them a little bit to the side just to give you a better idea of what's going on here. So this is the Creality K1C, which is like the fifth generation of the K1 printer. And the K1 printer was pretty messy at launch and I think there's three or four iterations of it. And then when they kind of figured everything out, they came out with the Creality K1C. And then they came out with the Creality K1 SE, which is essentially a stripped down version of this guy here. As you can see, there's no side plastics on it or nothing. It's just very bare bones and it's just a cheaper printer than this. So why would you buy something like that over this? So let's take a look at each printer side by side and see what features this one has and what this one doesn't have. And then we'll take a look at some prints and talk about who this printer is for. Okay, first things first, build plate. They sent me this build plate a while back. This is just one of those texture ones. It leaves a cool texture on the bottom, along with just a standard gold PEI sheet. But this did not come with the printer. This here came with the printer, just a smooth PEI sheet. Then starting with the K1C, they in incorporated this little rubber thing here that cleans the nozzle on the back. And has these little alignment screws in the back. Nice and easy. It's dirty, I know. Brother, uh... And then this one here is a little bit different. They have, they call it an A plate, but it's like textured. The only thing I could find online that looks similar was this epoxy resin build plate, which is what I'm assuming this is. It doesn't really look like a PEI sheet as the texture is not quite as rough, but stuff sticks to it very well. So I'm not 100% sure, but I'm assuming that's what it is. It also has the little nozzle cleaner on the back, which is nice, but it limits you to one side. Although it does look like you could print on this side if you peeled off the little nozzle wiper. So you don't have to do anything special for the nozzle wiper because it probes on it. So this one here, you can see it doesn't have it and it just rubs it directly on the plate. For all I know, the new K1Cs could come with that. I've had this one for a while now, so I don't know what the current model has. And then the next major obvious difference here is fully enclosed, comes with the plastic top, plastic, glass door. Completely open, no door, no top. So automatically you're limited to certain filaments because this can print stuff like ABS, stuff that requires an enclosure versus this isn't gonna hold any heat and really struggle with like ABS or ASA. Like I honestly wouldn't even try it. But if you're just printing PLA or PETG, TPU, it honestly doesn't really matter. Then these are both Core XY models. They appear to be exactly the same in that sense along with this head here, all appears to be the same here. They both have the Unicorn Quick Swap nozzle, which they call it Quick Swap, but I don't really consider it a true Quick Swap, versus like, versus this Flask Forge, which I consider a true Quick Swap. I can pop this nozzle in and out of here in seconds without a wrench. And then moving into the printer, we do have a side fan here, and then a fan on the back. This has no fan on the back or a fan on the side. It's open. Also moving inside here, we do have a camera to view your prints. And this one here does not have a camera, but there is a little plug to add a camera. And then coming into the top here, we do have a drag chain on this one versus this one is just kind of up and over here. Also the, the extruder and everything looks the same, just this one has a cover on it. And this one's just more exposed. And then as you can see, there's parts on top here. This is just 3D printed. This piece back here is also 3D printed. And then the build plate and everything is exactly the same as it's still just a K1 series printer. Then the displays are exactly the same. Everything here appears to be identical. They both do have a light up in there. The light appears to be the same on both printers. Then on the back, they both have the same exact backs on them. This one has the filament detector and same exact thing over here. So as you can see, this guy here is just a stripped down version of the K1 printer. And this is the K1C. There is also a K1 printer. Honestly, I think they're pretty similar. I think just they just have slightly different price points from the K1 to the K1C. I believe the K1 has a different extruder along with it does not have the unicorn nozzle and it also doesn't come with a camera. But you can see here, the camera is $30. And then also I saw down here, you can get a different door for 
$25. And it also comes with all the hardware. But overall, I like this printer. This printer lives in my house along with my Bamboo A1. And then we're kind of just like my in-house go-to printers where I'm just sending stuff through them. If I'm just like on Maker World and need something around the house, these are the printers that I use just for that stuff. Um, I print a lot of stuff with this. I really don't have any complaints. It's a little small and then the bed mesh isn't the best, but that's kind of a theme with the K1 printers. I, you can't level the bed unless you shim it, which is my biggest complaint with the K series printers. I would rather just have a little knob that I could make adjustments on, but you can't, you gotta shim it and it's just way more than an ordeal that it needs to be. And then my bed mesh on this is pretty off. I honestly didn't check the bed mesh on that one, but on some of these prints, you can kind of see the unevenness of the first layer. Not a huge deal, it looks okay, but that's just my big complaint on it. Otherwise, prints well, prints fast. I don't really have too many complaints. And then here is the bed mesh for my K1 SE. You can see that steep dive off as you'll notice in the prints later on. It is a little bit on the smaller side, but for, I would say for a majority of people getting into 3D printing, you're not gonna need that big bed area. The K1 Max has a huge bed, but it's got a thin plate on it. So when you get into high bed temps, it kind of warps and does crazy things. So I do like the K1 Max, I have that printer as well, but I would kind of only use it for like PLA where your bed temp's not getting to like 80 to 100 or something like that. I've tried printing ASA with that printer and the bed just all over the place. And one thing Creality has really been leaning into is the open source aspect of it, which I think this printer here kind of fills that market. I saw a picture online on their website of like a gold one of these. I would absolutely love a gold K1 SE. I'm kind of tempted to like take this thing apart, like paint it gold or something cool. And then I could laser cut some cool like acrylic for the sides and get like a cool looking door or something like that. I'm definitely intrigued. I don't know if I have time for that, but this would be the printer to like fully customize it just cause it's bare bones. And if you're someone that likes to tinker, this is a great step. Cause some people buy printers like these go in there and mess with the clipper settings. This has open source clipper. And I don't do all that. I get good enough prints for my needs, but it's an option. Some printers like Bamboo don't allow you to change anything in the software. So if that's what you're into, there you go. So this printer is 359 US dollars and this printer here is $500. But Crowdy runs a ton of sales. I've seen these for like 450 for the K1C. You could probably even get them cheaper. So this being $359, I would not be surprised at all if you could get it for like $299 or something like that on Black Friday. So I double checked the pricing and I noticed the K1C right now was $500. And then you come down here and the regular K1's $369 and the K1 SE's $360. So I think the K1 SE should be cheaper because the only difference from that and the K1 is the extruder and the nozzle from my knowledge. And this K1 comes with a fully enclosed printer, different sides, but you might be gambling on the extruder because that was the issue when they first launched. But I think they since fixed that. So I do think the printer should be a little cheaper. They also just launched it, so they might lower the price here soon. I don't know. So this video was on our second channel, Two Moose Two, which I made strictly for 3D printers, but I do have a full in-depth video reviewing this printer here itself on our main channel, which I'll tag up here in the corner if you wanna watch that video. So we're gonna take ahead and look at some prints that I printed with this printer. I honestly didn't spend a ton of time with this printer because it's essentially just a stripped down version of this, and I really didn't notice a huge difference in print quality. I didn't tweak any filaments, I just ran the stock profiles, so let's take a look. And again, this is an open printer, so you're a little limited on the filaments you can print. And I've already seen people in the Facebook groups customizing these things and 3D printing cool size for them and all that. So it's just a matter of time before there's a bunch of cool upgrades you can 3D print for these printers on like printables, Thingiverse, Thangs, and like Maker World. So there's gonna be free files very soon. I can almost guarantee it. All right, so first up, this is Pet G. I know it's white. It's just the film with the hat on hand in that moment, and I needed to print these out of white. But you can see, super smooth. There's some VFAs going on there, but I didn't tune this at all. All I did was change the filament temp. But overall, I think these look good. These are just like uh, these are just like hat holders you put on the wall. But I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. White Pet G from Sunlu, I believe. And I printed this just because it was a simple file. And I know it's hard to see the layer lines, I'm sorry, but 
I think this looks pretty good. Pet G. No tweaks. Printed this absolutely beautifully. Just a little baby planter. That bottom looks a little... Well, it's actually... I printed it like this. So that's actually the top in there, but no big deal. Overall, printed this orange Sunlu PLA really well. Then I threw some silk at it to see how it handled this. This is G-Tech Silk. I forgot what color actually, but looks pretty good. No tweaking. Oh, there in that certain angle, you can see a little bit of VFAs down there, but overall, I think it's good. Yeah, looks good. Cute little pug. Then this is Hyper PLA. This is Creality's PLA. This is like a vase mode little planter. Z seam looks decent. Looks pretty good. I didn't slow it down or nothing. This is just their stock profile. Then this time of year, I run a bunch of trail cameras, so I have, I use a ton of batteries, but I printed this seal out of TPU. You can see the inside there, looks pretty good. This is PLA. See the clips look beautiful. And here you can see the unevenness of the print bread. So one of these corners need to be shimmed. I don't know which one, because I didn't look at the bed mesh, but you can see that side's beautiful. Then over here. And here you can see where it dives off. That's the low spot on the prints. Not enough squoosh. And then the bottom looks exactly the same. But you can see it printed that beautifully. Nice and smooth, no complaints. Then this is just a stock profile. I want to see how I do on some round vertical walls. Not the best, not the worst, but again, I didn't tweak anything. But yeah, planter one, and then planter two. You can see this one looks a lot better. But there, if you hold it just right, you can see kind of them VFA lines. Over here, it's smooth, smooth. Oop, right there, you can kind of see them. Z seam, decent. First layer, you can see that low spot. But yeah, overall, no tweaking. I'm pretty happy with it. Then I went ahead and printed this out of black PLA. This is just Sunlu PLA. And I printed this pretty well. Then I brought this out in the sunlight just so you could get a better look at it. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the quality for not tweaking anything. Creality did send me both of these printers to review. I did not pay for them. If I were to buy a printer and I was looking at the K-Series printer, I would buy this one. Um, I'm not really a tinkerer, so I think this is cool and it gives it a more affordable option. And if you are a tinkerer, it gives you the option to fully customize this thing. But I'm not exactly that customer. But I think it's a good printer. I would personally buy the K1C over the K1SE, along with the K1. I think the K1's a little cheaper, but I know this is a good printer, and I would buy this because it has the couple added features. So out of the K-series printers, I would personally buy the Creality K1C. Again, it's $500 right now, and you can probably get them for $450 around the holiday time, which for, for a high-speed Core XY printer, they're kind of all in that $400 to $800 range. Bamboo's a little more expensive. And that's the end of the video. If you have any questions about the K-series printers in the comments, let me know. I appreciate you guys watching and... Ooh, I have something to show you. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this printer and it finally showed up. Bum, bum, bum. K2 is here. I'll be unboxing this tomorrow. But yeah, uh, that's all. Uh, we have a Patreon. If you want to support us, you can join our Patreon. We also have affiliate links down in the description. If either one of these printers speak to you, you can support the channel at no cost to you. Hope you all have a wonderful day.